morning, guys. I want to thank you so much for joining us today for this online service. Um, today, we are here to sing. We are here to get into the Word. We are here to pray to our, our Lord and Savior. I want to uh, continue to encourage you guys, all of you, uh, throughout the week to join us uh, for our men's ministry. Um, they're, I know they're getting into the book of Galatians. Um, they started that right now. Uh, the women's ministry, the Sunday school ministries, um, our Crossway Connect ministry. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to email us, um, and they could definitely uh, help you out there. Uh, here at Crossway, we believe that prayer is powerful, and prayer can change everything. So please, um, if you have any questions or if you have any prayer requests, please email the prayer team as well. And once again, everything is uh, kept confidential for that. Um, also wanted to uh, thank all of all the families who are continuing to con contribute to the church. Uh, since we are not meeting, uh, we had to adjust our giving methods. Uh, as a reminder, you can um, give through PayPal, Venmo. You could also use your bank, bank online bank pay to send checks or send checks to the, to the bank through, the e uh, through that email, um, the treasure at crosswaymtc.org. So if we could um, bow our heads for a word of prayer, and we'll start the service. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Um, Lord, we, we're so excited to be here. Uh, the fact that we get to uh, worship you, our creator, our king. Um, Lord, we pray for everyone listening to the service or watching the service. Um, that, um, that you just touch their hearts, Holy Spirit. Thank you once again um, for who you are and what you've done for us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He is Lord. 
Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Come, you weary heart, now to Jesus. Come, you anxious soul, now. love and comfort in your tears rest here in his wondrous peace oh the goodness the goodness of jesus satisfied he is all that i need may it become what may that i rest all my days in the goodness of jesus come find what this world cannot offer come and find your joy Tis the living water, never thirst again. Rest here in his wondrous peace. Oh, the goodness, the goodness of Jesus. Satisfied, he is all that I need. May it be. Savior Jesus Christ for our short 
Meditation, the scripture portion is taken from Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 24 verses 30 to 31 Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 24 verses 30 to 31 When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give to them. Then their eyes were opened and they were recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you for this blessed morning. Father God, we thank you and praise you for all your divine providence in our life. We thank you for the word that you've given us. Father God, help us to meditate from the scripture and help us to impart that in our daily life. We pray for those who are about the hearts in your presence. Our oh Lord, this morning speak to us. Open our hearts and mind and help us to understand the divine truth from the scripture. Gracious Lord, help us to overcome all the struggles along with you and empower us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a classic painting called The Way to a Mass by the Swiss artist Robert Sond. Maybe most of us have that in our walls. Sond is depicting the moment that Jesus started to interpret the scripture with the two disciples. But they couldn't recognize Jesus as he is. They were debating the experience that happened in Jerusalem. Today we are living in the world of fear and anxieties. We don't know what's going to happen next moment. With many expectations, we begin this year. But unexpectedly, COVID-19 has changed all our life patterns. With social distance took place, most of our life ended up in the four walls of the house. In the midst of all these chaos and uncertainties, we may ask where is God or why God is remaining silent. The red portion is known as the post-resurrection narrative. After the resurrection of Christ, he appeared to the disciples many times. Some scholars say that he spent 40 days on the earth after resurrection. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time most of whom are still living. Why did Jesus appear to the believers after the resurrection? Most common questions in our mind. Because they denied and betrayed him, then why did Jesus still search for his disciple and appear to them? The simple answer is to affirm that he is alive and also to prove that he got victory over death as he was promised. The red portion, two disciples were traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus, one disciple named Cleophas, and there is no details about the other disciple. On the way, they discussed about all the things that had happened in Jerusalem. The risen Christ was a sojourner, and Christ alone was walking with them, and the disciple they couldn't recognize his presence. A mass story reminding us that Christ is always with us. Christ is always with us. Verse 13 says, On the same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. St. Luke says that on the same day, two disciples were going to the village called Amos, which is seven miles away from Jerusalem. Geographically, this place was situated west side of Jerusalem. As they traveled, they were talking and discussing everything happened in Jerusalem, about the passion, trials, and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But Jesus himself 
walk along with them and listen to their conversations. As we all know, the disciples were going through deep pain, emptiness and fear because their master's physical presence was not with them anymore. Jesus met them in a situation of fear and lack of faith. The forces of the cross and death had killed their hope and expectations about the future. They believed that with the death of Jesus, everything had come to an end. St. Luke says that was the situation of many people at that time. The disciples also had a similar fear. They couldn't accept his resurrection because it is beyond their understanding. Word 16 says, but they were kept from recognizing him. Some translation says that, but their eyes were held on that they should not know him. This was a common notion with all the people. In the midst of difficulties, chaos, tensions, pains, we are not able to understand the presence of Christ because our emotions, feelings, anxieties always becomes an obstacle between you and God. We cannot relate with God the way we want. Like these disciples, our eyes also become blind or hold on. For example, we all misplace kind of stuff. In a time of urgency, if you search for something that you need, even if the object is right in front of you, you cannot recognize it because our eyes are blind. Here this disciple also going through the similar situation. They are in the midst of fear and agony. They lost all hope. They couldn't understand the presence of Christ. But Jesus never denied them like they did. He was always with them. In our life situation also, when we go through pains and struggles, He is always with us and giving us the assurance that I am always with you. God saying that I share chapter 41 verse 10 Don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with all my victorious right hand. This is a great promise. God is giving us the assurance that he is always with us. God never changed. He is always the same person. He's, he has all the same character all the time. Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The road to Emmaus is a symbol of our faith journey. In our personal life also, we have a tendency like these disciples to run away from our struggles and pain and we are searching for our own comfort zones. Jesus reminding us that our comfort zone will never heal our wounds. For that, we have to look up to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. We need to have a personal relationship with him. John chapter 16, verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you have a peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The risen Christ's presence is always with us, that never change. He is always walking with us in our faith journey. Are we able to realize his presence in our daily life? Secondly, Emma's story reminding us that he is not only be with us, he transformed our life situations. He is not the only God just walking with us. He always transformed our life situations. Verse 25 says like this. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe that prophet has spoken. Did not the Messiah have suffered these things and then enter his glory? These two disciples might heard about the resurrection. 
but their hearts were too clouded to believe it. Not only the, the other eleven disciples were also in the same condition. John chapter 20 verses 1 to 8 We see that the Peter and the other disciples saw the empty tomb, but they were confused. They couldn't believe in the resurrection. And St. John Gospel disciple St. Thomas said that he wanted to see the resurrected body. Unless he touched the nail prints, he won't believe. Also, St. John 21 verses 1 to 10, Simon Peter and other disciples went back to their old job for fishing. These are the, some of the response of the dis disciples. They couldn't believe the resurrection. They couldn't believe that Jesus is rise from the dead. In order to experience and understand the depth of the resurrection, we need to focus into scripture. Verses 25 to 27, we read that Jesus walked with the, this disciple and interpreted the scripture from Moses through all the prophets and said to them, this is the fulfillment of prophecy, the fulfillment of promise of God. This, conver this conversation enlightened their hearts and mind. It makes their hearts burning. Verse 28 says, As they approached to the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as he is going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went with them. As they approached to the village Emmaus, Jesus continued to going further. They called him to stay with them. At the table, Jesus blessed the bread and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened and recognized Jesus. The interpretation of the scripture does not open their eyes. It makes only their hearts to burn. What opened their eyes and makes Jesus to say, it is the breaking of the bread, the celebration of the supper. According to the Jewish custom, table fellowship and breaking of the bread symbolize the community gesture of sharing. Verse 31 clearly saying that at the table Jesus blessed the bread and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. Through the simple act of breaking the bread, the resurrection becomes real to them. Their life was transformed and understand the power of resurrection in full sense. Transformation not only happened by our own effort, but also with the power of Christ. Most of the time, we believe that transformation happened with our own will. Scripture teaching that Transformation only happened with the power of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. Recently, I got a privilege to read about Joseph Carvin's story. And he grew up in Ireland. Later in his life, he faced two tragedies. One was loss of his girlfriend and other one was his wife. After these two tragedies, he turned his heart to God and became a missionary. He labored in Port Hope among the poor widows and sick people, and he often served for no wages, even shared his cloth with those who are less fortunate than himself. On an occasion when Joseph became ill, a friend who was visiting him discovered a poem near his bed. The poem was a spiritual comfort to his mom, explaining how God is good. Later on, that poem becomes a popular Christian hymn. We all familiar with that hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, All Our Sins and Griefs to Bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. This song is very beautiful. He emphasized that as a friend, God is always with us. But to see that friend, we should turn our heart to Christ. During this pandemic times, what kind of transformation do we need? 
we all thinking about transformation we all need transformation but what kind of transformation god wants from us some of us wants to go back to the previous situations which are the normal lifestyle that we used to had some others are comfortable in the present condition they don't want change anymore and what jesus asking today he asking us to move forward with faith he's asking us not to be the slaves of conditions not to be a slave of the situation that you are in overcome the struggles and the pains along with christ all the pains and the fears that you are going through overcome with the power of the risen lord when the disciples recognized he was jesus they got up and returned to jerusalem with much joy to share the resurrection experience with other 11 disciples when they reached jerusalem they found others who already shared their experience they also saw the risen lord the messiah what is christian life is all about christian message are all about sharing the experience and bring others to christ these two disciples once they experience the risen lord they are going back with much enjoyment joy and they are willing to share their experience with other people so during this pandemic situations let us open our hearts and mind to see the presence of christ in our daily life let us share our experience with other people and bring others to christ bring light to other people may almighty god bless us this word amen Though the nations rage kingdoms rise and fall there is still one king reigning over all so i will not fear for this truth
as we enter into this time of corporate prayer, um, I want to start off by wishing each and every mother, grandmother, stepmother, <clears throat> caregivers who act, who we almost might as well say they're like a mother to us, mothers of children who have passed, whether a child, adult, in utero, or a yeah, mother of a prodigal child, to every mother, we want to wish them a happy and blessed Mother's Day on behalf of the Crossway family. Um, just the other day, I I just went to work out and um, running outside and walking outside. And um, I came across these two verses while I was listening to my Bible app. And the scripture was spoken to me, right? So as I was running, I was listening to it. And there were these couple of verses that I, I had to stop in my tracks. The Holy Spirit was just, it, it just, something jolted me to stop and it made me want to turn around and go back to my house, go straight to my, uh, the secret place, which you see, this is actually my secret place that I actually pray in. And I had to find out and read what exactly I heard that was that strong for me. And I, I'm just going to read a couple of verses I mean, I, I listened to the whole thing. All of it is just amazing. Um, but it says this, uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I'll praise the Lord. As long as I live, I will sing the praises to my God while I have my being. Um, and said, blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that's in them, who keeps faith forever. And then uh, Psalm 147, the first four verses, praise the Lord for it is good to sing praises to our God for it is pleasant. A song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and he gathers the outcasts of, Ju of, Ju of Israel and he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Um, and he determines the numbers of stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our God and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. And I just, I just love that. It just, and then it goes on. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him in those who hope in his steadfast love. I love that. Um, and it goes on and on. Um, but I did have to come back because I want to run back to the secret place because I really wanted to talk to him about it. It was enough for, I knew enough that the Holy Spirit inside of me and inside of you, uh, when it stirs, you, bear, you have to pay attention to it. You can't ignore it. And if, uh, so for me, it burned within me to be like, where's that from? And I looked at the app and I'm like, wait, let me look back in my, in the Bible, my book, because I, I'm a person that's very visual and I needed to understand it more like meditate. Not that I didn't understand, but for the fact that I'm, there was a change inside of me that I needed to understand. What is he trying to tell me and what, what has to become? What needs to change in me to have this word to live inside my heart? So I had to meditate on it. I had to really chew on it. So as we to enter in time of prayer, I pray that you would be able to enter in, get in the habit of getting in his word. And when something jumps out at you, to write it down, memorize it, and really talk to him. Why is he bringing this to light? And so... Needless to say, the rest of the time, I was just praising him. It wasn't necessarily asking him of things, but he wanted to re reveal something in me that I just realized the character of him and that he's very much interested in how he wants to display his life in me and in you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, oh, it's so good to be here, Lord. And it's good to be um, praying with my brothers and sisters in Christ. 
And I thank you, God, for the little children praying alongside with the parents, praying for individuals turn, tuning in and uh, listening to this entire service. I thank you, God, for mothers and uh, who are also praying. And there's a lot of mothers who are spiritual mothers who intercede for many people. I thank you, God, for them as well. Father God, I thank you, God, that we are able to come together in spirit and truth. Because God, your word says God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship you in spirit and in truth. So Father God, we are spirit beings. And we have the word of the Lord before us right here. So Father God, we are knowing that, Lord, we are praying things and knowing that we can trust in your word. Just because the Bible is open, if we don't read it and we don't love it and we don't chew on it and we don't live it out, there's no life in us. Father God, only you, Holy Spirit, can bring life to us. And I thank you, God. Father, thank you. Holy Spirit, for bringing Holy Spirit inside of us so that we can have the mind of Christ. Thank you, Jesus, so that you open the way so we would have direct communication to the Father, the love of a Father, that we can cry out, Abba, Father, in a time like this. And I thank you, God, for your word. I praise you for your absolute perfection, your holiness, and that we have this holy fear, that we cry out, holy, 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 that you're pure and that you are good and that you are love. Where the world spells out love in such a flippant way, your love endures forever and it's steadfast. It doesn't change. Despite us, you are faithful. When we are faithless, you are faithful and your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. I love that you're faithful to me, to our Crossway family. You can't change. You, you, you don't shift like shadows. And I thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from above. And I thank you, God, for that. There's no one like you, Lord. Beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. You are the great I am, as you say. And this great I am that spoke to Moses speaks to each and every one of us where the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And that when you knock on the door, when we hear your voice, we decide to open the door and you come and enter in and you have a meal with us you with me and me with you, we exchange. And there's this intimacy. And I thank you, God, for this intimacy where we can worship you today. I thank you, Father, that you're doing a great thing in the people of Crossway. And actually, people who are not a part of Crossway, in different churches, wherever they are, that you're burning something different inside of them especially during this season of the pandemic. You're getting us ready to gear us up to wanting to desire your kingdom again. Minus all the nonsense and the frills and the protocols and the traditions and the commandments, like that it, it actually strips away the heart of the first and only love that can only come from you, Jesus. You're stripping us of all the lukewarmness, self-preservation, that God, we are actually starting to pray for others for a change. That Father God, we start to say, Lord, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? And that actually allows a, a dialogue to happen. Where things at home could be very, quite volatile, that we have such a clear dependence, whether it be financially or emotionally or physically, Lord God. We cry out to you and you're making a way where there seems to be no way. You make the crooked path straight. Where we seem like we're in the desert, you, you, you're creating rivers to pass through. 
You provide our every need so that because of your kindness, we're able to turn to repentance. We get to know your character, oh God. I start to see that your delight, I start to hunger for your delight. That was what was burning in me. But Psalm 147, 10 to 11, it says, the delight is not in the strength of, of the home, horse, or nor in the pleasure in the legs of a man. You don't have any pleasure by what I do. How eloquent I speak to you. No, not for anyone or what we do and master and create to make things happen. But Lord, you take pleasure in those who fear you. Not to be afraid of you, but to understand that you are truly the Lord. And what you say, you do. So there's this reverential awesomeness. Because when you look above it, it says more about that you're the ones who determine the number of stars. And you give to all of them their names. See, you're great and you're abundant in power. And you, your understanding is beyond measure. But yet, God, you want to reveal these details to us when we ask of you. So, Father God, reveal to us in the world, in creation, in science, in everything. Even in the midst of this pandemic, that God, you are great and abundant in power. That you can destroy even the coronavirus, which is nothing. You just say the word and you, it will be gone. And I believe it. And it's already done because we have been praying for it. And so, Father God, I thank you, God, that you don't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I thank you, God, that there's a covenant understanding that those who abide in you, in that shadow of the Almighty, that no deadly pestilence or evil will come before us. But we should be sober-minded, watchful, knowing that they're there. So Lord, preserve us. Let us learn to run to you and not from you and not trying to figure it out on our own, but to learn to trust you and give credit where credit is due. You're the one who heals. You're the one when people are even crying when they had to bury people and during this time and they couldn't even meet their loved ones. You're the one who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. You're the one. You're giving peace that gives them like no one can ever give them. And I just thank you, Lord, for that. Father God, as we are just closing this up, Lord Jesus, we want to lift up to you every care, every mother here, Lord God. I pray that you would bless every one of them. I pray that you would just bless every one of them. And that they know what to ask of you. But not that they end up asking you of things. But though it needs to be said that you would build up their character to reflect you, Lord. We want you to bless every mother. Yes, health wise. Yes, financially wise. Yes, emotionally wise. Yes, mind wise. Like, fill them with you, Lord. More and more of you, Lord Jesus. And we pray this for all our loved ones. We thank you, God, that you're bringing everything into fruition. And we, we just thank you, God, for that. We thank you, God, that you're actually going to bring a just total divine favor and protection over this nation, over the governing officials, over all the first medical uh, first responders, uh, uh, you know, respiratory therapists, the emergency care workers. Uh, people in all different fields, even people in the grocery store, like they do beyond the protocol, you know, just to protect. And then Lord, help us to learn to respect one another, to honor one another. And even though we feel, you know, we are fine, that we would wear the mask, we have social distance, not out of fear, but because of love. And so Father God, to think of others and to just respect that space. I pray that we would just uh, be able to lean onto you with that wisdom and that each time that changes over that Lord we learn to be more and more dependent on you Father God I thank you for every family member uh, at Crossway Lord God yes I call them family and so Lord God I pray that you bless each and every one of them I pray that we would have more and more connection with one another so that we are united so that we are called to do what you're calling us to do not to pick up where we last left off because God I pray that we don't ever go back to that 
I don't want to go back to that. I want to forge forward to what you have for us. Just like in the Acts, just like the Ephesian church, where they worked mighty signs and wonders, Lord God. As a side note, actually, because they pressed into you, because they pressed into you and want to preach the gospel with boldness to anybody for the reason, the hope that's in them. And that, God, you would reveal to them more of you. Like, take us to another level, oh God. Especially as we're entering into a new church building. Oh God, maybe there be a changeover, a breaking down. We were talking about breaking down altars and erecting new ones. God, erect a new altar. Not a physical altar. A, a supernatural altar. Not like any other altar we have ever experienced. There's an altar of our heart, a personal altar in the secret place, and an altar there. We want the blood, your blood, covered all over that altar. Because it speaks of a deep covenant, a better covenant. And that God, that when people step in, they know you are there because they see it in the church people, into the people themselves, walking in it. Oh God, change our lives that we will never be where we were before the pandemic. I pray that we would be men and women showing love to all the world, to be lights in this world, salt, not losing its saltiness. A fresh anointing of oil pouring over our heads so that we would be able to be Christ-like to those in need. And so, Father God, we give this all to you. This is my prayer for Mother's Day. A fresh anointing over every mother and their children. So that includes all of us, doesn't it? And so, Father God, we praise you and we thank you for the mothers who we have held so dear and who passed. Oh God, we thank you, God, for them. We thank you, God, for them. And I thank you, God, that, Father God, we can run to you for anything, even if we don't know our mother's name. Glory to God, because there's just one father who loves us so dearly. And I just want to sing your praises like it is, because it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting here. So as we close, help us to continue to praise you. Help us to continue to open the word and to enjoy you. And we thank you, Lord, and we give you thanks and praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.